Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live for round seven of the 2016-17 iRacing Road Pro Series. We're here at the Circuit de Spa Francorchamps in Belgium this week, and boy, it's going to be an exciting race. 44 laps around here, of course, as usual. Going to test the drivers to the maximum around one of the best circuits in the world. And I'm privileged to be joined by Adam Bath for this one once again. Adam, it's one of my favourite circuits. Um, is it one of yours? Yeah, it's definitely up there. And a happy new year to you as well. And it's great to be back here. We're starting the run-in to the final race of the season. We've got this and we've got three more races after that to decide who is going to be the 10 drivers that are going to advance into the World Championship Grand Prix Series in a few months' time. Can't wait for it. Yeah, the World Championship is going to be fantastic, of course, in just a couple of months. But, well, we have the small matter of who's going to be on the grid for that. Um, so far, well, if you've missed any of the races so far, if you've missed the story of the season, it goes like this. Um, Interlagos in Brazil was the first round. That went to Bono Huiz of the Netherlands. And that was followed by another Dutch victory in Montreal via Mac Backham who was one of the stars of this series last season. Um, Silverstone was next. Stephen Michaels took the victory there. The American victorious. And then Suzuka for round four was won by Daniel Wensing of Brazil. Bono Huiz took another victory in Kota in round five. And then round six, all hell broke loose, really. And Marcus Jensen fought through that to take his first victory of the season. And um, Adam, well, could we get a sixth different winner tonight? Good to. Uh, we've got Jamie Fluke, who's still yet to take a race victory this season. He's high up there in the standings. Freak Chatos, he's always up there, but for some reason, something just seems to go wrong in the later stages of the race, and he always gets eliminated. But yeah, so we've got a few big names that are still yet to take a victory this season. We'll see if they can do it. Let's run you through the championship standings then as we begin our run-in to the end of the season. Marcus Jensen, who took his first win of the season last uh, the last time we were racing at uh, Monza, he leads the championship standings with uh, Jamie Fluke in second. As we were saying, Jamie Fluke yet to win a race yet this season. Bono Hui is in third. He won't be racing as Andrew was saying. He's in the Vegas E-Race, uh, which is happening later today, along with a uh, former World Pro Series champion, Graham Carroll. In fact, reigning Pro Series champion, Graham Carroll. Pashalis Sergis is in fourth, with Mac Backham in fifth, the winner at Montreal. Champ Oh, look, Bassi slipped down the order recently. Now we're in sixth with Balaj Remignac, a good driver in the second split up inside the top ten, along with Fabrizio Gobi, who's in eighth. Even Michaels, the winner at uh, Silverstone earlier in the season, is in ninth, uh, with Lucas Gotch rounding out the top ten. Looking further down, Andrew, it's pretty close on this bubble, the the, the final spot to get into the World Championship. Kevin Ellis Jr., Freakshire Torsen, Sebastian Job, all within a hundred or so points of Lucas Gotch. So expect that. 10th place to be chopping and changing over the next few races. Yeah, and that's the key, isn't it? That's where most of the attention is going to be focused. Of course, we are, you know, we are looking to um, cover all the main battles for the race wins and things like that, but it really is about who gets in. This is the point of this series. Top 10 get an automatic RSM World Championship Series license. And then I think another 10 will be um, receiving pro licenses, which means they are eligible to join the grid for the World Championship. But, of course, due to the amount of cars on the grid, that will be later on in the season for them. So they'll, they'll lose a bit of time, of course, Adam, um, on some of the regulars. Yeah, and we've got drop scores to factor into account as well. And uh, you're really just going to make sure that you're there at the end of the season. Of course, Bonahui, he'll be using one of those drop scores today uh, because he won't be think, racing. But, yeah. I think Bono, as long as he does, I think, all the remaining races, I think he's going to be absolutely fine there. Um, but again, he still has to come here and not and not get retirements and, and um, carry on going. Uh, a man who's been, you know, up and down this season, but going some decent form again once, once more is Mike Backham. He currently is on provisional pole with a 145.307. It's quite cool out there. Uh, track temperature only 24 degrees. That's lending itself to some very fast lap times. Frick Chateau is currently second, Jamie Fluke third, Dan Wensing in fourth, race winner earlier on the season. Chembo Lukbasi, you could argue, might have won a race, um, possibly even in Monza if he wasn't rear-ended by the quite the same spot car of Backham. Uh, Giuseppe Ragusa is looking strong here, sixth place at the moment, ahead of um, winner last time out, Marcus Jensen. And um, Jensen, uh, 
Adam Dane, who been very consistent throughout the season, taking a lot of top five finishes, and that's really the recipe for success, isn't it, in the iRacing Road Pro Series? Yeah, that was it. Until he got his win at uh, Monza the last time we were racing, uh, we were just talking about how consistent he was because uh, he wasn't racking up the wins, but uh, he's managed to finally get that race win, and that's definitely put him in a strong position now, leading the championship going into round seven of the season. And yeah, him and Jamie Fluke, both Apex Racing UK teammates, uh, they're starting to become a formidable duo. Jamie Fluke currently third in the uh, qualifying standings, as you were saying. Uh, Marcus Jensen in seventh place as well. So they seem to be the kings of consistency at the moment. Fluke, of course, last season's winner of the iRacing Grand Prix series, of course, the Class A series just below this one. Um, Point out some names there on this list. Um, David Williams having a better showing for Coanda as well. 14th for him. A um, lot of experience on iRacing. Um, Balas Reminic, we saw him having fantastic battles last time out of Monza. He's currently 16th. Um, and a few others as well. Jack Keithley has been battling around in the second split. Um, so far, no lap set for Pashalis Jurgis, but uh, he goes 11th there with a 145.850. That's half a second off the time of Mac Backham. Jurgis has been known to make some positions during the race. Uh, qualifying isn't the be-all and end-all, and uh, also there's no guarantee that these conditions that we've got at the moment in qualifying will transfer over to the race. It's very cool here in Spa for qualifying. 23 degrees ambient temperature, uh, 24 degrees track temperature, and we'll see if that carries over to the race. Jalvaz at the moment in 10th. Uh, he won the race last year at Spa when we were running the Williams, and it shows, again, that uh, this McLaren, in its first season in the Road Pro Series, uh, is continuing to shake up the field just a little bit. Yeah, that's right. And um, don't underestimate the pace of Jalvaz. Very quick driver. Um, doesn't always get the credit that he deserves, really, for his pace. Only one man still out there, Daniel Bieder. He's on his third lap, so this might be a, a fast effort as he attacks the Fania Chicane. Uh, as he just negotiates that, Balas Remignac completes his third lap, so he goes up into uh, 16th here. Daniel Bieder now just going through Stavolo, curve Paul Frere, and uh, now the fast run through Blanchimont into the bus stop chicane. Now, I think he might have just picked up an off-track there, I don't know. Seems like he's OK. Um, we will see. We'll see what he does when he gets to the bus stop chicane, whether he bolts the lap or not. Blanchimont, flat-out section here, very easy in these high-powered, high-downforce Formula 1 cars, of course into the bus stop, beautiful line from Bida. really nailed his braking, perfect turning, didn't hit any of the sausage curbs, he crosses the line, and it was an invalidated lap, yeah, an invalid lap, yeah, so Bida unfortunately stays 19th, well unfortunately for him anyway, not for the rest of them, um, Adam if you can take us through then, I think everybody's finished, those qualifying winds down, takes through the starting grid then for the Belgian round of the R Racing Road Pro Series. Okay, so Mac Backham starts on the pole position for the race, 145.307. Freakshire Torst on the front row. Could this be the race where he finally gets that elusive first win of the season? Same for Jamie Fluke. He's starting in third. Dan Venting, the winner in Suzuka, starting in fourth. Marcus Jensen, the most recent winner, starting in fifth. Stephen Michaels, the winner in Silverstone, starting in sixth. And Chen Bolek Bassi, who's still yet to take a race win this season, starting in a seventh place. It's starting to get pretty interesting for Sebastian Job. He's outside the top 10 and needs some results. He's starting in 8th with Giuseppe Ragusa in 9th. Javaz the winner the last time we were here in the Road Pro Series starting in 10th. Vashali Sergis starting in 11th with Lucas Gotch holding that vital 10th place in the standings at the moment starting in 12th. Kevin Ellis Jr. starting in 13th. Simon Cattell in 14th. David Williams 15th. Balaj Remignac starting in 16th. Zoran Jonic in 17th. Fernando Guerrero in 18th. Daniel Bieder the last car across the line that we just saw there, starting in 19th. Istvan Balog, the man that uh, controls the cameras, or gives us the cameras um, for Sam to use, starting at 20th. So that would be impressive if he could do that while driving. <laughs> Dream and race. Maybe in the future, who knows. Uh, Jack Heathley in the 21st. Sebastian Dunkel, 22nd. And the last car that set a time, because there will be some drivers that will join the session that uh, haven't taken part in qualifying. Uh, Russell and Sabatov starting in 23rd place. Yeah, a bit of a poor one for Sabatov, actually. Usually a lot quicker than that, but he'll be looking to improve his form in the race. Um, so, Adam, just quickly before we wrap up this qualifying portion of this show here on iRacing Live, um, looking at the grid, is there anything that surprised you from, from that outing? 
Uh, nothing really. Um, Sebastian J may be starting a bit lower down than he'll want of a racer in the uh, iRacing World Championship Series. Jao Vaz, the winner uh, last season as well, starting in 10th. However, we've seen this season that um, there's plenty of overtaking in this series. So we could see those guys working their way up the order uh, when the race gets underway. Well, if it's anything like the last round at Monza, everyone here is in for a real treat. So while we wait for the race to begin, usually about sort of what? 10 minutes or so before we'll be back for the race show. But while we do that, we'll leave you with a recap from last week's eventful race around the Autodromo Nazionale Monza. If you missed it, please have a watch. It's great. Um, we'll see you in a bit then for the race coverage from Belgium. Andrew Woodhouse and Adam Bath will be back with you in 10 minutes. We're here for the iRacing Road Pro Series from Monza. We have 26 cars here. And the green light is on, it's a poor start, it's a terrible start from Frank Chatos. Jim Bollock Bassi going through into the Retafilio for the first time. And there's already cars going across the inside curve. And somebody's off as well, Fluke into the gravel. Mac Packham very, very close to um, Chem. Oh, the contact there at the Parabolica. And Mac Packham and Chem Bollock Bassi. And suddenly, how the dice roll, how the fortunes turn for Frick Chatos. Luca Scotch and Pashalis Jurgis is now going at it. It's that's now for second place. I mean, I think he got a bit of damage as well. He did. Look at his front wing, for example. Just a bit of a close shot there as we swing by. So front left wing, he did get involved in it. And um, it is slowing him up because the last lap, he was some six tenths of a second slower. Three tenths, two tenths of a second. Maybe a move into turn one here late on the brakes for Jurgis. And in, Rick doesn't really defend it. Oh, he's lost it and Gotch has hit him. So maybe yet more front wing damage for Lucas Gotch. Great run by Lucas Gotch. Now he can open the DRS. Now he goes through and Lucas Gotch leads here at Monza. Keith Lee and uh, Zoran once again into uh, the first corner, side by side. Oh, both drivers nearly missed this again. Oh, uh, Winston into the pits. First driver to, uh, to jump in. Yeah, so that 22, pretty early. Oh, side by side, Xiao Vaz Balas Reminik. Reminik defending hard into the road here. Maybe too hard because Xiao Vaz got the undercut, but he just lost a tiny bit of traction at the key point. He's going to try and go in the inside of the Lesmo. They bag wheels. Vaz is nearly around and Chatos is through. And well, that will cheer up Fiction Boss a little bit. Not good for Lucas. Look at where he's come out, right in the middle of, um, of things here. Go just into, into the pits as well. So this could be an interesting little battle. Who's right behind him? I think that's Kevin Ellis Jr. in as well. And here comes Marcus Jensen. Is he going to go round all of them? Into the chicane. Oh, oh and contact I think there. Gotch in 21st place. Back into the pits for a second time. Serving what appears to be a speeding penalty. 19.7 seconds in stationary fourth. I'm just looking at Kevin Ellis Jr. actually up and into second place. Let's see if he has the pace to uh, catch up um, Jensen, who's 1.7 clear now. Here comes Jurgis. Jurgis is going through on Ellis into the chicane. It's a late chase for second place. Two laps to go. Pachalis Jurgis imposing his will on that position. Three top five finishes so far this season. This is the first time that he takes the victory. Marcus Jensen wins at Monza. He wins for Apex Racing UK. Marcellus Georges takes second place. Kevin Ellis Jr. in third place. And Mac Backham, what a story for him during this race. Fourth position.
iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. Truex in the outside, contact made, 56 slides in at a four, who's oh, gonna be in his strength? Dead even, give it to Ryan Truex. Truex is your winner over Tandy.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live for the iRacing Rogue Pro Series from the Circuit de Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. Andrew Woodhouse with Adam Bath. And um, Adam, very entertaining qualifying session, actually. Um, we have the biggest grid of the season, 32 cars here. And if you could take us through them for us. Yeah, we've got quite a big grid here. We're about to go down to the grid. Track temperature 38 degrees. It's slightly warmer than qualifying. Mac Backham starts on the pole position. Rick Chatorst on the front row with him. Jamie Fluke starting in third, Dan Vensing fourth, Marcus Jensen, the race winner from last time out in fifth, Stephen Michaels in sixth, Chen Bolek Bassi will be starting in seventh for Sebastian Job, who starts in eighth, loops it around on the exit of the bus stop chicane, Giuseppe Ragusa starting in ninth, and Jao Vaz starting in tenth, Pershalish Zerges starting in eleventh, Lucas Scotch twelfth, Kevin Ellis Jr. starting in thirteenth, Simon Cattell in fourteenth, David Williams fifteenth, Balaj Remignac starting in sixteenth, Lauren Jonic in 17th, 18th Fernando Guerrero, 19th Dan Daniel Bieder and Istvan Balog starting in 20th. Jack Keefley 21st, Fabrizio Gobbi from the second split starting in 22nd. Mark Warmington 23rd, Sebastian Dunkel in 24th, Ferran Kern in 25th, Alex Bergeron in 26th, Ruslan Sabatov 27th. Blaber Alvim Tofoli starting in 28th place with St Stephen Alarcamp in 29th, Victor Preto in 30th, Mark Warmington uh, starts, uh, must have been on Kara starting in 31st and starting in 32nd. These two cars not setting a time in qualifying, uh, Francesco Fioroni. Thanks very much, Adam. Five different winners so far this season. Will we get a sixth? Well, we'll find out very shortly. 44 laps. Is the, uh, is the race distance here, this seven kilometer circuit. Full Grand Prix distance, of course, for those not used to this series. This is the chance to get into the iRacing World Championship Series. Top 10 drivers will automatically do that. Waiting for the drivers to line up on the grid. You see the bright yellow car of Friction Toss on the first row. Mac Backham will be joining him shortly, the pole man. Much warmer out there, 38 degrees track temperature. That will come into play later. So we will discuss that during the race. And now we're getting ready for the start here in Belgium. And we're away as the green light is on. It's a brilliant start by Fluke. He's already taken the lead. And he's going to be in the lead into Lassos. He's already usurped Mac Backham. Backham tries to go around the outside. He can't make it. This car's running wide at the back. There's somebody sideways. But I think we're okay. I think everybody is facing the right way. Towards O'Roos for the first time then. Up the hill at Radion. Over the crest. Mac Backham in the slipstream of Jamie Flute. Can the Kwanda Sim Sport driver take the lead back into Lacombe? Looking to Here the inside comes. already. Here he is, in, uh, yeah, up the inside, and he's got the lead back. So fantastic start there by Jamie Fluke, but Mac, but Mac Backham has got the lead back going into uh, Radion and Lacombe at the top of the hill. We've seen in the past that sometimes leading out of Radion can sometimes be a vulnerable position. It was that time for Jamie Fluke. Daniel Vensing is third, fourth Marcus Jensen, fifth Frick Chatos, a terrible start from him off the front row of the grid. Cembo Lukbasi is in sixth. Jalvaz in 7th and Giuseppe Ragusa in 8th. Terrible start for Sebastian Job. He was one of the cars going wide. Oh, David Williams gets hit and he has to slide the car into Puan and he's able to get the car going again, but he's going to lose more positions. He's going to be knocked down to about 20th place oh. at least. A bit sideways there. I think that was... Um, I'm not sure who that was. Oh! Off in the background, Apex car, it's Alex Berger on, and he's, oh, he's just trying to get the car back onto the track, and he does. Problems with the Apex Academy driver there on lap one. Uh, Berger on, very hard charger. He's been um, moving up through the field very, very quickly in recent races in split two, but it's Mac Backham of the Netherlands that leads into the bus stop chicane on the first lap. Lap one of 44. And just as I was saying before, uh, we saw that problem uh, for David Williams, a uh, terrible start for Sebastian Job. He was one of the cars going wide on the exit of La Source. He's now down five places to 13, so not the best start there uh, for Sebastian Job, where he needs to get look some at, points to get inside the top 10. Look at them all battling for about 20th place. You've got Dunkel and Balog, Gobby, Guerrero, Williams. Still so close towards Eau Rouge. Guerrero and Gobby here.
Yeah, and this is, with, this is before the DRS actually comes into effect. DRS comes in on lap three up the inside there. He's looking David Williams. He wants some positions back, trying to get it back past Fernando Guerrero going into Lacom at the top of the hill, but no way through there. And he's going to have to spend the next 43 laps trying to get those positions back. And, uh, yeah, you know, have to, he's going to have to overtake quite a few cars now. But it's Kern has made a move past uh, Victor Prieto. That was for about 23rd place, I think, that one. Mac Backham leading by about three quarters of a second from Jamie Fluke. Then it's Daniel Vensing, race winner this season, as is Marcus Jensen. Then Frank Chatos, who, as Adam mentioned in the qualifying show, he hasn't won a race yet this season. However, the Dutchman has been beset by problems, sometimes of his own making. We'll be hoping for a clean run today. That's on the front row, Freak Schatzorst, and he just got hung out to drive by the fact that Jamie Fluke and Dan Vensing both got great starts, and they were up the inside of him by the time they got into the source. So Freak Schatzorst down three positions uh, to fifth already, uh, and of course that amazing start from Jamie Fluke from sec on the second row of the grid. Not also has made a couple of brilliant starts this season, but also the equal number of bad starts. DRS will be enabled this time, lap three of 44. So the activation point... Adam will be just at the top of Eau Rouge and then the detect and then the um, sorry the detection point just at the top of Eau Rouge and then the activation point halfway down the Camel Strait it's one of the longest DRS zones we see in Grand Prix racing yeah and uh, Matt Backham's done what Sebastian Vettel always used to do back in the day and that is break the one second and Jamie Fluke can't use the DRS now and now he's going to be under pressure from Dan Fencing who definitely has the DRS going down the Camel Strait indeed he does for those who aren't sure what, what's DRS I hear you cry? It's the drag reduction system. They, if you are one second or less between in, behind the car in front, you can press a button at predetermined points on the track, you open the rear wing, your car creates less drag, it's more aerodynamically efficient and it gives you more speed. It's an overtaking aid and I tell you what, it really has increased the amount of overtaking we see in Formula 1 racing Adam, over the last oh, five or six years. Yeah, there was a stat that I saw the other day and um, the amount of overtakes that it has helped uh, create is, is quite astronomical. And yeah, the DRS working wonders and I'm sure it's going to play a key factor uh, in this race today. Richard Tors closing in on Marcus Jensen, the winner last time out at Monza a few weeks ago before the Christmas period. Jensen in fourth place. Uh, Richard Tors wanting to gain one of those spots. Back he's in fifth. And Jao Vaz not too far behind. Cembo Bassi not too far behind him as well. He needs a, a good resource after uh, falling a bit off the boil recently been a good start for Zhao Vaz, started 10th and up to 7th, the Orion race team, he's been moving forward pretty well in most of the races this season, it looks like Frick Chitos is on the move though, let's see if he can get past Marcus Jensen, um, the way that our racing is at the minute, um, Adam, with the aerodynamic model and things like that, the DRS is far more crucial than the slipstream and we're going to see um, Big advances here, I think, with that. Yeah, he, yes, yeah, I think so. And uh, Friction Tour's very close to the back of Marcus Jensen. If he can if he can stay with him through a rouge and over the top of the hill at Radion, he should have a good chance of taking the spot away here. The DRS flap opens on Friction Tour's uh, red line car just in front of them. Uh, Dan Benzing just having a little bit of a look there on uh, Jamie Fluke going into Lacombe, uh, but no way through for either of them. Friction Tour stays in his position, the same for Dan Benzing as well. Because of the way these Formula One cars are with the the great braking ability and the high downforce levels. The Coombe is actually a reasonably fast corner, so you really do have to be alongside in order to make a move stick into that fast, into that medium speed right left chicane. And um, I don't know, we've seen in the past it can sometimes end in tears there. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, tricky circuit to get right, as you're saying. It's a very fast entry for these guys and uh, these McLarens and the way that these cars handle and uh, you can get caught out on the exit, the car can just get away from you due to the quick nature of direction. So I uh, expect drivers uh, towards the end of the race, if tire wear does become a bit of an issue for them, uh, they could get caught out. All these cars are V6 hybrids uh, with electric motor working in harmony with the petrol engine and uh, the drivers have to manage their ERS energy recovery system throughout the race to make sure that they've got enough power in the in the hybrid battery essentially Adam and that's charged up in the braking areas yeah there's so much more for these drivers to do now since uh, the uh, the coming of the McLaren to the iRacing service before that they just had the Williams they just had to worry about the fuel strategy but now they've got to worry about the power that they've got how much 
they want to save for the end of the race and how much they want to use at that moment in time. So uh, it is becoming more of a mental game and uh, some drivers have said you've got to really know how to use a, a computer now when you race these cars. That's it. Um, let's go on board with Freak Chatos then and let's see him chasing down Marcus Jensen. We'll see what effect the DRS has. He's about half a second behind here. Jensen also has the DRS and this is the corner that we were just talking about, Adam Lecoum, let's see how Chatost can attack it. Takes a bit of the inside curb, pretty nice line through there and then opens up the right-hander of Malmody. Yeah, good through there and you noticed on that lap that in front of uh, Chatost, Marcus Jensen had the DRS on that lap, so it shows that they're, they're closing in now on Dan Venting, who could be getting held up just a little bit by Jamie Fluke, so expect that to be something to watch in uh, the next few laps or so. There was a change for position at the top of the hill uh, at Le Coombe. I think it was uh, Stephen Michaels possibly getting passed by uh, Lucas Gotch. Yes, it was. So Lucas Gotch now up into a uh, ninth place. A gain of three positions for him. Stephen Michaels getting relegated another position. He's now down four spots from where he started. He's now in 10. Yeah, and um, it's the sort of time of the race where you're going to struggle to make some um, progress, really. Uh, in these DRS trains, as they call them. Sometimes struggle just to get the advantage on the car in front because the problem they've got, Adam, is the guy in front always got DRS. And look at this attack now from Chimbo Lukbasi. Very, very close to Freak Chatos. Oh. He might have a go into the bus stop. Oh, locking up the brakes. And Freak Chatos in front of him. This is a DRS zone as well on the exit of the bus stop chicane. And Chimbo Lukbasi might be about to set up the red line driver beautifully here if he can get the DRS. He does, but... Uh, Freak Chatos has it as well, so he can use it to defend going into La Source. Most of the drivers, it looks like, wisely not having a lunge into La Source. They know that the Kemmel Strait is the place where you can be overtaken, you can be engulfed by the car behind, because the DRS is very powerful here at Spa-Francorchamps. Lucas Scotch is definitely a man on the move. He's got a fantastic run on the exit of Eau Rouge. Giuseppe Ragusa might be at his mercy here, because he oh. hasn't got the DRS, and Lucas Scotch looking this way and that. <laughs> Ragusa there, he was only taking his line through the kink but as Gotch was looking to the outside almost ended up um, thrusting him into the wall but Gotch very quick at this point in the Grand Prix he might even have a look into Rivage, very difficult overtaking place here mostly because you get so much understeer, the way the track falls away from you the camber is very tough and now through the corner with no name well, sometimes known as Liège, but everyone knows it as No Name Corner. And through Pouon, which is a very, very grand left-hander, Adam. Very fast and punishing on the tyres. Yeah, this second sector is probably the best part of the lap for me. You begin your descent down the hill, loads of quick corners. You've got uh, uh, the corner with No Name, as you said, and then through Pouon. And then you've now got this fast section to end the lap as well. Through uh, Stavolo, Paul Frere, which they're going through now and on the, wa the way towards Blanchemon and I'll tell you what Giuseppe Ragusa he's got no help in front of him no DRS to help him defend and surely he's going to have to force they're going to be forced to yield that place to Lucas Gotch uh, even not in the bus stop chicane but either at the end of the Kemmel straight or oh, into the source here he comes Gotch obviously using a bit more ERS there a bit more energy recovery and through he goes into the bus stop nice move but look at, look at how this is backed up the pack it looks like maybe Ragusa already struggling with his tyres, Adam, because he looks like he's getting all sorts of sideways coming out of the chicane. Um, it's good to see our commentary colleague Alex Simpson has popped into the chat. So, hello, Alex. Good morning to you from America. And I um, hope you're enjoying the action. The man was in the Grand Canyon yesterday having his breakfast, of all things. I hate him. Um, <laughs> lap seven. Uh, Adam, I'll tell you what, we're starting to get a bit of a Grand Canyon between Mac Backham and JB Fluke as well. It's now 2.7 seconds. Yeah, and if it's if he's not too careful, Jamie Fluke, it could be an entire state between uh, Backham and Fluke by the end of the race. Three seconds. Uh, Fernando Guerrero is just dropping down a few positions. Uh, I don't know what's happened to him. Uh, he might have had a slowdown, possibly. I can't see any damage to that McLaren, but um, I will just have a little look back and see if anything did happen to him. It, was, it looked like a slowdown penalty. Uh, did he cut the course at the top of the hill? No, it didn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. it might Unless have just been a poor run. Unless he just ran run. out of VRS. That can happen, been... and of course you can see all the cars are dressed as well, so the speed advantage, yeah. disadvantage, would have been quite big there. Might have been charging the battery up there. He lost three places. 
but again it really is important that you keep a good level of ERS because you can see visually there just how much you're handicapped when you do lose that electronic boost to your petrol engine that you've got behind you the V6 now speaking of a boost I think Freak Chateau's could do with one but he's already 4.7 seconds off the lead and not really punishing the back of Marcus Jensen. The Jensen oh. has lost it at the chicane. Somehow he gets out of the way of the other car. Oh, oh no. no! He's been hit by Gotch and oh, Ragusa. No. It's all coming together. There's Apex cars hitting each other behind. That was Joe and Georges and Michaels getting entangled. And that's but the end of Marcus, Jensen's race. Marcus Jensen lost it. He looked like he locked the rears at him. Going into the bus stop chicane. He just lost control, the Danish driver. And it's all oh. kicking off now. It's Ragusa's got serious problems as well. He was the car that, co that got collected by Marcus and I, Jensen, and he's back in the pits too. And, and I have to say, it wasn't a good rejoin, was it? No, no. And it was his own. It was his own making, both the spin and then the rejoin. And uh, well, this, well, the man is, oh no! the championship is out. Into the wall goes Sebastian Job. Oh no! He lost it uh, in the DRS on the on the middle of the straight, Andrew. Oh. We've seen that happen before. There Driver's losing it. What was he doing? Was he pulling out of... Oh! He was pulling oh. out the slipstream of um, Balaz Remignac. It just went into the wall. Let's have a quick look at that. I don't know if... Uh, let's just see. I want to see how whether it was a late move by Remignac or not. No, it wasn't. It was fine. Job just losing the car. And the catalogue of errors for the 2016, uh, 2015 BSRTC champion. It just builds and builds. Well, Alex, uh, you come onto the stream and you lose two of your cars in the space of half a minute. Um, Even commentating, commentators curses the stream. Bad rejoin if that, by if that's Jensen, a, if that's a really reason was. to leave, I don't know what is. And, you know, um, got a lot of time for Marcus Jensen, but that wasn't a very, very good rejoin at all, really. A bit of patience might have sufficed, although the, the problem he had really was, um, Adam, that he was in sort of... Uh, Fifth or sixth place, but really there was no gap for the next sort of 10 15 seconds. And I guess I'm not making excuses for the rejoin, but he obviously thought he had to get on with it to try and get back in the in the fight and uh, ended up with the DNF. And that's it's the golden rule that Alex just says, you know, you've got to finish the races. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a bad rejoin, and I thought I thought there'd have been enough cars, but of course, there was a huge pack that we were just talking about before we saw the spin, and they were all coming at a fast rate of knots. And, yeah, Marcus Jensen, I'm sure he'll be uh, wishing he could turn back time there. And, uh, yeah, he's now in the pits uh, with what's almost certain a race ending uh, move there. Change for position. Stephen Michaels getting past Lucas Gotch, who picked up a, his own bit of damage after we saw him fighting his way through the field. Uh, that is now Michaels through into uh, seventh place. Lucas Gotch now down to eighth after uh, spending the last few laps working his way through the field brilliantly. Well, I hope this doesn't curse any of um, his drivers, but it's good to see the world champion Martin Kronke in the in the chat as well. Good afternoon, sir. And um, yeah, it's all eyes on this iRacing Road Pro Series race. It looks like a lot of the guys who aren't here today, this is their it looks like their early morning entertainment. So, welcome along, lads. It was a big day in the sim racing world. We've got this today. It's a the massive v day. Yeah, we've got the Visa Vegas E Race coming up later. No. We've not seen any money on that sort of scale used in any form of sim racing before. Sim race before. No, I tell you what, that is um, some serious cash. However, the serious business is currently on the track here at Spa, trying to get into the iRacing World Championship, the most prestigious championship in the world, of course. One of the best ones. And, uh, well, we're seeing some. We we weren't seeing a massively eventful race, Adam, until that point. But that's definitely um, made things interesting. And for the second week in a row, Lucas Gotch gets caught up in someone else's accident and, and has some front wing damage. Now he's chasing down Stephen Michaels, who won a race earlier on in the season at Silverstone. Yeah, Stephen Michaels won round three of the Road Pro Series at Silverstone. Did it pretty commandingly as well. Didn't have uh, too many issues there. And uh, yeah, Lucas Gotch with that front wing damage, and he's going to start to suffer, I'm afraid. And it is a shame because uh, he had been working his way through the field, could have gained quite a few more positions, but he could uh, spend some extra seconds in the pit stop and get that damage repaired. But 
I think he will like to get on his way and uh, yeah, he's currently in eighth place. Again, a four positions where he started. It, it almost depends less on the amount of time he's actually losing as to what the balance of the car is because I know, I mean, look, I'm not half as skilled as these drivers out here, but I, I prefer to have the balance right even if you lose a tiny bit of time. Um, as long as the car's comfortable to drive, that's how you want to attack the circuit. So if he's really losing, losing out on balance, he's got a lot of understeer or a lot of oversteer um, for the uninitiated. If you understeer means you hit the wall with the front of the car and um, oversteer means you hit with the back of the car. Perfectly said that. Uh, um, some of the big movers throughout the field so far. Uh, Massimiliano Ficaro starts at the back of the grid after and not setting a time, I don't think. He's up 12 positions from where he started. He's currently in 19th. Uh, Sebastian Dunkel up nine positions as well. Uh, Jack Keithley also up eight positions. Some big movers through the field there. And Francesco... And uh, 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 Francesco is up a few positions as well. Fies Francesco Fioroni. He's up nine positions too. Yeah, um, it, it really says a lot of the high standard that we've been getting this season in the in the top split of the Road Pro Series because a lot of the guys who were going around the second split, um, like so Jack Keefley, Daniel Bieder, um, Gobby, Ferenc Kern, Mark Warmington, those guys, as race winners in those second splits, they are well and truly firmly in the second half of this field, Adam, and it really shows how the iRacing... Um, how the i-rating system has worked to its advantage here. Yeah, uh, and just as David Williams makes a move on uh, Sebastian Dunkel, the fact that we've got two splits today has helped some of these guys showcase their talents. They've got the opportunity to show on the big stage in the top split of uh, what they can do. Some of them showing it to great effect. The likes of Jack Keefley, we don't usually see him in the top split, but he's gained quite a few positions and is up and mixing about with the guys that we usually see in the top split. So, yeah, good job from those guys. Yeah, and that was easy for David Williams, so Coanda will be pleased with that. Martin Kronke will be, no doubt, um, impressed with that. With his man moving up the field again after a slightly poor start, I will say, but Dave Williams showing a lot better this week than he has been for most of the season. He's a very, very good driver, but he's just struggled a little bit uh, in the past sort of uh, so many rounds. Yeah, he uh, had a bit of, I think, lag contact going into uh, Puon on lap one of the race, David Williams, yep. the corner which, which has just gone through now. Oh, and off in the background is uh, Sebastian Dunkel. Oh, that could have been a bit oh. of a dangerous rejoin there. Fabrizio Gobbi just gets past Gun Scaves, and he didn't want to ha do what happened to his teammate, uh, Lucas Koch, did he? Yeah, he didn't hit anything, Dunkel, but he, he locked the wheels. It was quite strange, quite strange off in the middle of the Franny chicane. You don't often see cars off there, Adam, but um, Dunkel survives with no damage, so he, he had a little bit of damage already from an earlier collision. He only lost one place as a result of that, Sebastian Dunkel. He still gained seven spots throughout the race. And uh, Isavan Balag just behind him. And then there's an Apex Racing Academy car. Two Apex Racing Academy cars. We've got Massimiliano Ficara and Ferenc Kern. Daniel Vensing still hanging on to DRS with Jamie Flute, the battle for second and third. And um, you've got to wonder as well, you know, whether... Because it is a long race. We're only one quarter of the distance. But you've got to wonder whether Daniel Vensing might be saving some ERS, maybe for a, a, a further assault. Or... Is he just hanging on to the back of Fluke with the DRS? Is the DRS pulling him along, or is it allowing him to save the car? Could be using this for an undercut later on in the race. Of course, all the drivers have got to do one pit stop during the race. Uh, they don't need to take on fuel. Uh, there's no fuel stops needed uh, in this McLaren. It's all about uh, the tyres. And uh, yeah, Freak Chateau's could, uh, sorry, Dan Benson could be using this as an opportunity when the pit stops come around. Jamie Fluke could come in earlier, and then Dan Benson could do the quick laps and then get out in front of him. The older drivers, of course, get 100 kilos of fuel to use for this full Grand Prix distance. They're going to make that last. Um, we haven't seen too many issues with fuel, have we, this season? We, I think one or two, but not really anything major. Um, the drivers have been pretty disciplined in that sort of... I think they're used to it now, though, aren't they? All the teams have got a handle on it. Yeah, all of the biggest team teams like uh, VRS, Coins, Sim Sport, Radicals, Apex Racing UK, uh, Redline, uh, from their experience of last season's um, World Championship Grand Prix series, I don't want to remind um, Redline about what happened to uh, Gregor Hutu, but we will. Uh, like he ran out of fuel at uh, Silverstone. Wow. Uh, the drivers, the teams are learning a lot more about it now, and uh, they'll be making sure that the drivers 
uh, manage to use their fuel management well and are able to get to the end of the race and get those points on the board. Now, Flute didn't have a particularly good last source, so this could be a chance for Daniel Venting. He's very close. No doubt he'll be using maximum ERS now. He might seize the chance, the Brazilian driver. Closing, closing, closing. Having a little look to the inside. Got Jamie Flukes late enough on the brakes and is astute enough to know that he doesn't need to cover the inside line and Dan Bensing getting very ragged there in his pursuit of that apex car. Very close now for Bensing and um, of course you know if you can't make the overtaking move maybe trying to bait Jamie Fluke into just outbreaking himself into Lacoon. It is one of the most annoying places to miss your breaking point because of the way the track narrows like it does and uh, yeah we'll be looking to make the Northern Irishman blink what we say just looking at the, the lap times that we've been setting in qualifying earlier we had a uh, track temperatures a good 10 or so degrees less than this and i know the drivers will have been on qualifying fuel but we were doing 145s the drivers have got four fuel loads as andrew was saying 100 kilos worth of fuel and they're doing times five seconds slower than the pole position time set earlier by mac backham so expect those times to come down towards the end of the race yeah i mean usually this uh, three or four seconds due to fuel but a couple of seconds of that is definitely down to the temperature out there much warmer 38 degrees track temperature as opposed to 24. Um, there is a 14 kilometer an hour wind as well coming from the southeast now um, that definitely could affect some of the cars and make some of them quite unstable because that is a you know it's gusting to about 18 to 20 kilometers an hour we can see so the drivers will be having to adjust their braking points almost on the fly, Adam. Yeah, these cars are so heavily dependent on... Oh, hello! Something's happened, Lucas Gotch yeah, Lucas has Gotch gone. Lucas spun. He's ended up in the wall. Did he hit anything, though? Let's have a look. Oh, yes. Uh, well, he just grazed the wall, but he's going to have to try and... Um, it's going to be difficult for him to get that turn round. Has he's he done it? He has. So Not going in 17th. It's right behind Sebastian Dunkel, who's been off the track himself recently. So um, let's see if Gotch can make a move. Actually, he's very close now. Might have some dirt on his tyres. So he's going to have to be careful under braking, although he's closing, closing, closing on Sebastian Dunkel of the gym team. Oh, the straight line speed's killing him. And look, it's the Van oh, yeah. just goes, breezes past him going into Lake Coon. Lake and, that the and that could be the damage from the Jensen incident rearing its ugly head because he had DRS as well. Could be under pressure here for Massimiliano Ficaro at this race. Also shows how much progress Gotch had made because after that spin, he's only down six positions from where he started. So uh, Lucas Gotch now down in 18th place. Well, Gotch, of course, was on course to uh, win a race last time out, but beating in the pit lane, of all things, uh, derailed that chance. So it's been a case of what if this season for Lucas Gotch. Because at the start of the season, he was, you know, he was um, living in the midfield a lot of the time. But as he's moved up the grid, oh. it seems like his looks got worse. Alex Remignac's off. Um, might make a hack and it went off back in 2000, just on the exit of Stavolo towards Kerpol Frere. Put two wheels yeah, into that, that Astro turf there. And of course, Hakkinen managed to fight back in, beat Marco Schumacher to the win on that day. But Remignac. He's got back going again, managed to look the ground, I don't oh, he's collected anything. He hit the rear wheel on the wall as he um, as he spun the car back round. I hope he hasn't received any suspension damage from that. Ironically, he's in that group now with um, Lucas Gotch. Oh, oh nice Gotch twitching his car again coming out of the bus stop chicane. Really struggling for traction. It's oh, and he's clobbered, he's Van Ballon. And the Remediac has to take evasive action. Uh, Balog has got that going as well. Both of those two missing, uh, losing out big time there. Remignac just getting back on behind, in front of Ferenc Kern. This time Balog might fancy his chances of getting past the Apex Academy car now on the Kemmel Straight. And in front of them, a change for position. Side by side, it's Massimiliano for car again past Lucas Gotch. Gotch continuing to suffer here. Oh dear, Gotch. Gotch's braking suffered, didn't it, <laughs> into La Source. The old, uh, the old chrome horn well and truly utilised. Messy race in the midfield today, I won't say that. Alex Remignac back where he started pretty much it's after gotta that be the, spin. It's got to be the hot conditions, hasn't it? Must be, this is when, this is when you need Alex Simpson on hand. Um, to, to give some insight, or maybe the drivers um, 
are just so confident in their abilities in these cars that they're willing to take all these risks. The thing that the thing that I've always been told with this car when you're driving it um, is that it's it's when you put a lot of heat through the tires, the tires struggle to recover. So if you can keep them, if you can keep it smooth, if you can keep everything under control, tend to be okay. It's when you have a, a slight, you, when you have a bit of wheel spin, or when you have like a half half spin or a lock up and things like that, that's when it's very very hard to bring the temperature down. So that's that's the issue a lot of these guys are having. We can see now that Wensing. Wensing is very close again to Blue. I say very close, not very close, just about six tenths behind, but the DRS is going to help him. He doesn't have enough. It was a good lap last time around from uh, Dan Wensing, as you are saying. 151.1 for Jamie Fluke, 150.8 for Dan Wensing. A good few tenths of a second quicker, the Radicals car, than the Apex Racing UK car, but he wasn't able to utilise it there. Jamie Fluke was able to get a good run out of La Source, and if you get a good run out of there, you can pretty much cover the a car behind off by the time he gets a Lake at the top of the hill. Yeah, and it's been um, and, and Frick Chatos at the minute is having to do that because Cembo Lukbasi is not too far behind. They've been joined by Zhao Vaz. It's been a nice tidy race from Frick Chatos and that's really what he needs because again the Stills mistakes been creeping in. It's just been a messy season for him. Despite even being on pole position earlier on in the season. Yeah doing okay at the moment in this Race, race seven to ten. Uh, we were, we're at Spa nine. today. Just nine. Of nine. <laughs> there you go. There's <laughs> two more left. Imola and, and the Nürburgring. The Nürburgring. Yes. Um, East Van Bollog has just been passed by uh, Ferenc Kern. So Kern is through into 19th place. Good to see that from the German. First time, I think, in the top mm, It's only been in the top split a couple of times, I think, this season. Yeah, Estevan had just got the move done on him at the top of the hill into Lake but lost it around the rest of the lap, so he's going to have to get that position back. Lucas Scott's trying to get back past Balaj Remignac. This is where all the action is at the moment in this in this race today. We're on uh, lap 16 of the race, 28 to go. I just want to give a little um, shout-out to Matt Warmington, who's in 23rd place for um, Blue Flag Racing. Um, Covered Mark quite a bit on Apex Racing TV over the years. He was in the old V8 Supercar Series that we used to used to do, and he was a first-time winner in the Road Pro Series last week. The last time out at Monza in Split Two, but he's under a lot of pressure here from Francesco Fioroni, Adam. Fioroni, yeah, uh, one of the big movers through the field that we were mentioning earlier. See what he can do with DRS. Can he get anywhere into La Source? Oh, David Williams uh, might be in issues. He's off and he's on his roof. So oh. Kevin Magnussen. He's on his roof on the exit of Le Corte, of, of Eau Rouge. And it, tell you what, it's pretty much similar to Kevin Magnussen in, in, the, in the Belgian Grand Prix from oh, earlier. What's happened to David Williams? Oh, he just loses it in Radiol. Hits the wall. Oh, and agonisingly over and onto his roll hoop. There's nothing he can do there. And he's back There's in the pits. No. Something happened to Cembo Lukbasi. It has. He's crashed. He crashed with. He crashed with Frixitos and Jalvas. So what we that didn't was going see on. It on the camera, because we were looking at David Williams's big crash. Oh with dear. Cembo Lukbasi and Frixitos and Jalvas all ending up in a bit of a heap. They what? Uh, Frixitos has probably got. Uh, oh. The least amount of damage, but he definitely got a bit of a tap. And uh, Vaz yeah, Jao Vaz hit the, hit the tire barrier. He, Vaz hit it hard. The Bolu Bassi <laughs> got the tap from Mac Backham at Monza, and he's well, he's returned the favour to a, a different Dutch driver in uh, Frick Chatos. I think Chatos' car will be fine. That's um, not what can be said for the car of Bolu Bassi or Jao Vaz. So this is the order now. Uh, Jao Vaz still going? Dalvaz is, he is. is still going. He's in fifth. How is still going after that? That's a massive hit. Anyway, if Lucas Gotch is suffering from um, the, the problems that he's had, uh, then Jean Vaz, at the moment, we'll see if he loses any time during the rest of the race. But yeah, Stephen Michaels is now in sixth. Kevin Ellis Jr. in seventh. So this has worked out uh, a treat for Apex Racing Academy. That's and now Pashalis Sergis coming under pressure from uh, Simon Cattell. Look at this. Two DRS zones here. And, and there's all sorts of moves going on here. Cattell. Not managed to make a move on um, Jurgis, but I've never seen a, a car hit the wall that hard on iRacing. 
and survive. Not a, not a, not a Formula One machine. Very lucky, uh, Xiao Vaz. It's got to have That's some serious damage, though, you would think. The, you'll see how much you might have to be held in the pits. We don't know when it comes up in a moment, but uh, Balage Rally yeah, just thing. getting past you. Dunkel. It forces you to repair any front wing damage, doesn't it? So, yeah, he he probably will have to um, spend an extra few seconds in the box. Might be grateful for that though after after the contact with the wall. Yeah, and it's up five positions, Shao Baz, and of course one uh, Spa. Uh, last time we were here, of course we were in the Williams. Uh, but Xiao Vaz gaining five positions. We did say in qualifying that he would be able to get some positions back from where he started. And yeah, up five spots now in fifth. Uh, Friksha Torst pretty much on his own now after that contact on the exit. They come into Malmody. Bows in the pits. Uh, we've got David Williams in the pits after his uh, fli <laughs> flipping moment. Dan Vensing is into the pit lane as well for a scheduled well, this stop, has, it looks like. This has to be the attempt at the undercut then. The undercut for those that don't know you earlier you get the fresher rubber you get on your way you set quicker lap times and by the time the car that you're racing with comes into the pits you are long gone in front yeah and of course the undercut never really used to exist in Grand Prix racing because you'd come in you'd take tires you'd also take on more fuel but of course now that the refueling doesn't take place the automatic advantage of the new tires is what you need and it's worked out well for Daniel Vensing because he's got about a four second gap to Daniel Bieder in front of him so Wenson can get on with it. Yeah, he slots in nicely just behind Dan Bieder and ahead of Massimiliano Ficara. Some of the cars into the pits. Lucas Gotch, he'll be there for quite a little bit longer just to get that extra bit of damage repaired. Fabrizio Gobby, Gobby in and away in 4.1 seconds. Remignac also in and away 4.2 and Gotch sitting there for 11 seconds to get all that damage repaired. Back Backham leads by 5 seconds and... Um, Really, this is a return to the form of Mac Backham from 2015 and 2016, isn't it? Because he won this series, didn't he? Um, sorry, he won a lot of races in this series last season, last year, should I say. And um, he was a force in the iRacing World Championship Series in, in 2015. But since then, it's not been um, not been stellar for him in, in uh, full competition. But he's working his way back up there and hopefully he'll be a fixture in the World Championship next season. Yeah, he had a fantastic start to last season and if he had taken part in the whole season he probably would have been able to beat uh, the eventual champion Graham Carroll but uh, yeah, he took plenty of wins at the start of the season, wasn't able to finish it off. Took a little bit of time at getting used to the McLaren, it didn't, ha didn't go his way in the first race of the season at Interlagos but he was able to get back on the top step of the podium after a brilliant fight through the field at uh, Montreal, Jamie Fluke pits. But now this is going to be interesting. Dan Fencing is just coming into the bus stop chicane now. We'll see where Fluke emerges. Yeah, Fluke pits from second. Wensing needs to have the lap of his life here. Try and usurp the Northern Irishman. Let's see if he can do it. Fluke away. Decent pit stop. Here comes Fencing. He's through the bus stop chicane. It's going to be close. The exit. And I think Jamie Fluke should be able to get it done. Yeah, he is. Jamie Fluke's away. Uh, with Daniel Bieder just between both of those guys, between Jamie Fluke and Dan Bensing. Also in the pits, uh, Stephen Michaels was away in 4.1 seconds. Jack Keefley also in. Massimiliano Ficara and Istvan Balag. They have all took the opportunity to pit on this lap. Mark Warmington also in as well. Jack Keefley then. He's ahead of Fioroni, so that's quite, that's quite good. There's a bit of a gap for Keefley. Lap 20 of 44 here in the iRacing Road Pro Series, round 7 of the season from the circuit of Spa-Francorchamps. Here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live, Andrew Woodhouse joined by Adam Bath. And um, Adam, it was it was a, kind of a slow burner, wasn't it really? But it's all, um, it's all gone a bit crazy in the last sort of 10-15 minutes. Yeah, the battle lines are starting to be drawn here in the second half of the race. We're just about to start the second half, in fact. 24 laps to go here at Spa. Mac Backham, race leader, still yet to make his pit stop. Friksha Torst uh, involved in a bit of contact earlier on, and we've seen some great big battles in the uh, second half of the top top 20. Dan Benson getting past Dan Bieder. Uh, that's one kind he's managed to do away with. He can now set his sights after Jamie Fluke. Quite a bit of a gap between those guys now. Dan Benson well, was harassing the back of that Apex car in the first half of the race. Well, that was nicely done because he didn't waste a hell of a lot of time getting past Bieder there, Wensing. So good work. Rick Chatos is in. Also, Kevin Ellis Jr. into the pits. Chalfaz oh, also in as well. It's going to be very interesting where uh, Chatos comes out. 
Galvez, we need to watch how long he's going to be in the pits for as well. Yeah, let's have a I'm look. guessing it'll be a fair while as Flute goes through and also Wednesday. Baz in seven seconds, eight seconds, nine, ten, ten point eight seconds. Now, is he? Just behind Boluk Bassi. And Bollock Bassi in as well. Bollock Bassi still in the pits. Yeah, he overshot his pit box, I think, just a little oh. bit. Got back going and, again. Well, Andy had the damage as well, so he needed a new front wing as well. I'm surprised that the suspension's not all bent on that McLaren, but looks like he's okay. After that 10 second stop, Jalvaz gets going again in uh, eighth place. Simon Cattell and Mac Backham, the only cars in front of him that are yet to make a pit stop. David Williams is out of his car, as is Fernando Guerrero. So those two might not be taking any further part, or at least waiting until the, the repairs are made. Daniel uh, Francesco Fiannone has just dropped a few positions. Let's see if. Oh, he was off. He was off in the. He was off at Lake Com. Oh yeah, and he, he came out, and that was right in front of uh, Reminick as well. Reminick got a bit of a shock. Reminick's trying the inside into Rivage. Oh, Gobby problems for Fabrizio Gobby as well. Does that work? I don't know what's, what's happened ha to him. What's happened to Gobby? Oh, uh, it was it was that it was. Oh, he got dis. I think oh, he got they disqualified. All crashed, did they? Yeah, he got. Uh, it was he got disqualified. Oh, um, it was a bit of a neck cold, I think, was it? It was the it was the contact with Fiannone, but uh, yeah, Fabrizio Gobby. I think he hit that incident limit of 15, and yeah, he's out of the race. Mac Backham's in then from the lead for Coanda. He must be able to retain the lead, surely. You would think. Simon Cattell is also in. Car's jacked up for Backham. He's down. He's away. Very nice stop. Here comes Fluke. Jamie Fluke might take the Fluke. lead here. It's going to be very close, though. Very close. This might work, actually, for Jamie Fluke. He's got the superior run on the exit. It might be Mark Webber and, and Fernando have... Alonso territory here. Well, he should have DRS here, then. The through the compression at Oru's over the hill at Radion. Don't cut the course. You might get a slowdown at the top of the hill. DRS enabled for Fluke. Can he get anywhere near Mark Backham? Backer wasn't banking on it being this close. Retains the lead lap for now. Fastest lap of the race on the last lap by Jamie Fluke. He is on it. 149.676. Mac Backham's best lap, 149.7. That was early on in the race. And look at this. Apex versus VRS Coanda Sim Sport for the lead. He's all over him here, Fluke, with warm tyres now. Backham trying to get his tyres up to temperature. You don't want the tyres to be too hot, but... There is an operating window in which they weren't the best, and Fluke is operating very nicely at the moment. Right under the rear wing of Mac Backham. If he uses the right amount of VRS here, he might even be through into the lead. He's not won a race this season, as you said. Mac Backham has. Mac Backham going for his second win, one at Montreal, round two of the season. Jamie Fluke sitting second in the overall championship. He wants to get that win like his teammate Marcus Jensen did at Monza last time out. And he will get the DRS onto the front straight if he remains within this second. Four tenths of a second separating these two as they head towards Blanchemont. Daniel Vensing as well, lurking, waiting, watching. Seeing if there's going to be some shenanigans between Backham and Fluke. Backham's had a good final sector, pulls away slightly through the bus stop then. How confident is he in traction? The answer is pretty confident. Nicely done for him, but DRS enabled for Fluke again. So into La Source, it's going to be about who gets a nice exit through here, who gets on the power early, who can fire the car down the hill towards Eau Rouge. That's his lap of the race for Freak Chateau's done that lap as well, so he's working well nicely on his new tyres. In fact, look at the amount of gap that uh, Fr Matt Backham's gains just in this opening sector. The gap's been yeah. stretched out to three quarters of a second now. Yeah, tremendous sector from Backham. And you've got to say that's probably the grip from the new tyres but supreme commitment from the Dutchman. Koanda Simsport will be watching on in awe of that as he just prizes the door open, ekes the gap out. Jamie Flute, well, iRacing Grand Prix Series champion, as we mentioned, he's going to struggle to stick with it. Five teams inside the top five. Uh, we've got VRS Koanda Simsport leading the way in Mac Backham, Apex UK in second with Jamie Fluke. Radicals in third with Dan Vensing, Redline in fourth with Freak Chatorst and Pex Academy team in fifth with Stephen Michaels. Yeah, Michaels having a decent run. 
Um, someone else is having a very, very good run out there. It's Kevin Ellis Jr. And you mentioned that he was on the bubble with regards to getting into the World Championship in 2017. And, um, well, this is impressive, isn't it? Yeah, he's now up into sixth. He's about to crack the top five, Kevin Ellis Jr. And he has uh, pitted. Moment. And he has pitted. Uh, he's not too far away from his teammate. He's behind him, Zhao Vaz. A reinvigorated Zhao Vaz, we should say. He has pitted. He's got that damage out of the way. And he can now set his sights to get back up the order again. The same for uh, Lucas Gotch, who is uh, very close to and has got past Ister Van Balog. So expect Lucas Gotch to be a man on the move in the second half of the race as well. 21 laps to go here. Yeah, that was just on this lap and also Chembo Lukbasi, who you have to say caused that um, incident with Chotost and Zhao Vaz. 11th for Bullock Bassi, but it could have been much worse. He could have easily retired from the race. As could Zhao Vaz. That was a heavy impact on the wall. He managed to survive it. Um, let's go on board then with a the lap with um, Zhao Vaz as he locks up into La Source. So here we go. Down the hill towards Eau Rouge. One of the most fearsome corner combinations you see anywhere. Down the compression, up the hill. Keep it tight to the right. Don't put the course on the inside. Now the Kemmel straight. Long, long section here. This is where the DRS zone is. Second one of the lap. Into Lekou. Medium speed, right, then left. Then right again for Malmody. You can attack that part quite nicely. Now it's Rivage. We mentioned the understeer that this camber creates. Got to try and get it right to the inside and just be patient. Don't try to get on the gas too early because you can run extremely wide and compromise the exit and the entry to Liège. Now it's Pouon. Down two gears, throw it in on the power early. Let the car run wide and open the steering as much as you can to get a good run towards the Fanny's chicane. Got to try and be patient through this first part to open up the second part. Short shifting, Jalvaz through the gearbox of the McLaren MP430 the, of the Orion race team through curve Paul Frere after negotiating Stavolo now it's the long run towards Blanchemont you can see Kevin Ellis Jr getting a little bit closer now is he flat? he is flat through Blanchemont good commitment it's pretty easy with the heavy fuel won't overheat the tyres heavy braking to the bus stop nails the first apex nails the second nails the exit drs zone number two and adam that is a very very nice lap of spa francochon 49.802 for Jao vaz uh, not too far off his personal best but you can see he's much closer to uh, kevin ellis jr after that uh, great lap there fastest lap of the race also on that lap by uh, mac backham 149.671 he's wasting no time in getting away from Jamie Fluke. Broke the DRS on that on that last lap as well. The gap over a second now for first and second. Dalvaz has actually got within a second of Kevin Ellis Jr. after that good lap as well. So he'll get closer to that Apex Academy car over the next few laps. Yeah, he was three tenths quicker than the Scotsman in the previous lap. He'll be hoping to um, keep that going. Now, Freak Chateau's fourth place for Red Line. On his own there, but. And he, he needs to really focus now. He needs to make this a good last 20 laps because he needs this fourth place really, really badly. I'm, I'm quite impressed that Flukes managed to stay there, Adam, to be honest, after that initial surge from Backham. Yeah, he has. He's managed to get the gap back under a second again, and it has been yo-yoing through parts of the lap. We saw how good Jamie Fluke was through Puon when they both came out of the pits. But oh, and, oh, I thought Backham nearly lost the car there. Uh, Fluke's got the gap back down to under a second. Seven tenths. That might be enough to get the DRS out of the exit of the bus stop chicane. He hasn't got it hmm. this time, though, but if he stays within a second, eight tenths of a second at the moment, well, he could get it on the exit of the source. Well, he should have had the DRS, so unless he forgot to press it, or it was a bit of a visual glitch on our part. I think he's forgotten to press the DRS that time, you know. 1.1 second now, and I don't know where the detection point is for uh, the one here. I think, it's, I think it's sort of on the exit of Eau Rouge, isn't it? I think. Yeah, Maybe on the, the entry. There's the activation, yeah, and he hasn't got it this time. Dan Vensing has, and you have to say that it's Vensing getting closer to Fluke and Fluke getting closer to Backham. Fluke's really going to have to work hard now to get that back because Matt Backham's been excellent so far really has been just 
pummeling the laps in. Bounding through 26 laps. Look at that Frickshire Torst, uh, t sitting 12th in the standings at the moment. Two top fives all season. Yet to take that win, though. Average finish uh, second. Shows you how good he's been. Average start of second, sorry. Average finish of ninth. So it shows you he's good in qualifying, but just when the race comes around, uh, it doesn't really work out for him. He's not too far off the top ten, though. He's currently sitting on uh, 1,193 points. Uh, Lucas Scotch in 10th, the cutoff point for those World Championship licenses, uh, 1,245. So good result from him to here today, which is what he's doing at the moment in fourth. Uh, he could find himself getting inside that top 10. I think he's shot us won't need us to tell him, and uh, Redline team principal Dom Duhan won't need us to tell him either that, um, that he, he shouldn't be in that position considering how quick he's been all season. But that's why, oh, mistakes can cost you as Jao Vaz very nearly made one of his own. In the exit of Stavilo, he nearly lost the car in a big way. Good save. That's kept him on his way. He was getting very, very close to Kevin Ellis Jr. But of course, Adam, as you get closer, the dirty air really comes into play and you struggle to follow through corners like that. It's the medium speed, the high speed corners where you lose that grip, you lose that downforce. Yeah, the drivers really struggle to follow each other into this corner we're going into now. Eau Rouge, Dan Bensing. Uh, trying to get back to Jamie Fluke. Fluke who lit up the tyres just a little bit on the exit of the bus stop chicane last time around. Uh, just looking at the lap times, uh, Jamie Fluke, 150.0, 149.8. So another two tenths of a second taken out there, the Apex UK car. And Ben Sink moving, on, moving his way up. French Chateau's fastest lap of the race earlier as well. 149.5 for Backham. So Backham's broken these two now, it looks like. Looks like a battle between VRS and Redline for the fastest lap of the race. Backham just uh, seven hundredths of a second away from Freak Chateau's fastest lap of the race. Of course, you don't get any points, I don't think, for the fastest lap. Uh, I don't think you do. Uh, but the point it's... system for the Road Pro Series this season, anyway, is pretty random. Yeah, it is it's depending on... It's a traditional iRacing point system, so it depends on the strength of field, it depends on how many people in the race. I racing, yeah. I everything really. Um, too complicated to go into before the end of this race, I would say. Um, for those who don't know what we're all about here, this is Apex Racing TV. We are live on iRacing Live, and this is iRacing.com Motorsport Simulation Service. All you need to get started is a basic wheel and pedal set and an adequate PC. iRacing is pretty good with um, optimizing its software, so you can. Most PCs will run it to a, a respectable level. Um, you can even use a controller. Not recommended, but some people do. Um, and you can get started in the rookie leagues. And you never know, one day you might be here on Apex Racing TV with the iRacing World Pro Series. Or even the iRacing World Championship. And Xiao Vaz has spun again at the exit of the bus stop. And his World Championship oh. hopes are just ebbing away with every little mistake, every little problem. Oh, yeah, just looking back at it, it looked like he'd managed to accelerate cleanly out of the corner, but going up through the gears, he must have hit the rev limiter, and that was enough to send the car off. I don't think he had just a light brush with the concrete wall. He's got back going again, and uh, he is down in temp. Dear me, Xiao Faz. How many lives is he wanting to use up in one go? Dear me. Very nearly wiped out earlier on. Probably should have been, to be honest. Expected his crew chief to be telling oh. him his car was toast. Bolek Bassi losing a position very easily. Could be about could be all about the ERS there. That is Jack Keithley. Daniel Beder, sorry, getting by. Beder up to eleventh place. Nick that is his Keithley. eighth position gained. Uh, Keith is ahead of these two, just ahead of uh, Xiao Vaz, actually. Gained a position, Jack Keith Lee, out of Xiao Vaz's misfortune. Vaz needs to be careful he doesn't let this get to him. I don't really know what, what sort of temperament he's got inside the car, but this is where you've got to draw on all your mental strength, and this is where, you know, obviously, we normally talk to Alex about it's not just about the, the driving performance, it's about the mental aspect, it's about the physical aspect. And you've got to keep those negative thoughts out of your head. Adam, it's so easy. I know for a fact you've seen me do it. Um, how the little things can just 
great on you during a race and you end up making even more and more and more mistakes. Yeah, especially if it builds up over just a single race or over the entire season. It's just small little mistakes can play in your mind and uh, yeah, that's what could happen. And also incidents could be starting to play a part as well as Daniel Beza yeah, right. locks the oh, ears. Yeah, big mistake by Beza. Here comes Jem Bolubasi. He's going to try and get the position back into La Source. Beda, he's on the ERS button. Oh, he's gone wide at La Source, he gone? <laughs> He's got the Kimi Raikkonen line. Could be interesting. It could be side by side going into Eau Rouge. Fortunately, not he's quite. got the run on the, end, on the exit to just emerge ahead of Bolak Bassi. Now, let's see what Bolak Bassi has with the DRS then. Let's see what, what sort of power he has in that Radicals machine. The answer oh, is he's not none, got no power. None at all. Oh, and here comes, I'll tell you who has got some, it's Balas Remenik, he's on the inside. That's both and of them, so up through. to 11th. The Bullock Bassi, to 12 goes Bida. Bullock Bassi is really struggling in a straight line. I bet he got a, I bet it's a suspension, I bet there's a slight tracking issue or something. I bet, I bet something just scrubbing along the floor and just, just really hurting the straight line speed because aer aerodynamically the car is fine, he's got the car repaired. And the front wing damage that he had at least, so has to be related to the suspension or might have even damaged the engine must be the engine i think because he's look how much he's able to stick with these guys through uh the second half of the lap with all the corners so must be either nguh related or uh something to do in the, with the drivetrain or uh, something in the combustion engine maybe he's just not maybe he's just lacking that ers power maybe he just hasn't sufficiently recharged that mg uk and uh, well, he's really suffering. On look at this, it absolutely dropped here, and and I'm I'm afraid it's only going to get worse for the last 15 laps. Just before that happened, I was talking about the amount of incidents. Uh, Jao Vaz, you do two incidents, I think, for loss of control, and if he does that too yep. many more times, he could hit that incident limit of 15 and get disqualified, like some other drivers have been today. Well, he's, got, he's had a loss of control. He would have got a 2x for hitting the wall. Um, he's been off a couple of times. He might have got a 4x earlier on as well. Yeah, it's, um, it will be touch and go for some of these guys. Don't, don't be surprised if we do see some disqualifications come the end of the race. Let's have a look, quick run through the order then. Matt Backham leads by 1.8 seconds ahead of Jamie Fluke. Daniel Vensing in third. Breaks the toss in fourth. He's about seven and a half seconds behind that front group of three which are covered by about two and a half seconds Stephen Michaels is in fifth he's been fairly anonymous apart from his he was involved slightly in the Marcus Jensen incident Kevin Ellis Jr is in sixth ahead of Simon Cattell he's had a great charge through the field Pashalis uh, Jurgis is in eighth with Jack Keithley in ninth the biggest mover of the day or one of them up 12 places Xiao Vaz in tenth somehow Valos <laughs> Reminic 11th Daniel B the 12th and the battered Bolog Basti in 13th. Uh, Max Vicara is 14th. Lucas Gotch in 15th with Isvan Balog in 16th. Then it's Ferenc Kern, Sebastian Dunkel, Victor Prieto, Ruslan Sabitov. And 21st, Mark Warwington. 22nd, Kleber Tofoli. 23rd, Francesco Fioroni. And 24th is Stephen Larkamp. We have lost Fabrizio Gobi, David Williams, Fernando Guerrero, Alex Bergeron. Giuseppe Ragusa, Marcus Jensen, Sebastian Job, and Zoran Jonic. That's when to the final quarter of the race then. Uh, just under 14 laps to go. Back back in two and a half seconds in front. 49.3. He now holds the fastest lap of the race. That's time around 49.7. Shows no signs of slowing down. It's the VRS Coenda Sim Sport driver. Currently sitting in uh, fifth place in the standings. Just one point away from fourth, which was held by Pashali Shurgis. So uh, you can expect him to leap up a few positions. And of course, Bono Huis, who's currently third in the standings, he's not here at all today, racing in Las Vegas in the Vegas E race. So expect Mac Beckham, if he's able to get across the line and take the win, could be up inside the top three in the points. Alex was saying that um, Chem might have an ERS problem. So it is, a, it is a possibly an ERS bug. It doesn't something charge the, it. Or, something yeah. in the electronics, yeah, where he's either not getting, where it's either not firing when he's hitting the button, or 
it's not charging it properly. I'm sure we'll um, we might hear from him after the race and find out exactly what it is. But he's really suffering. Doesn't seem to, um, is that, that's not the first time it's happened to him this season, I think. Um, I think he had, it Mon having, he, had, yeah, he had it at Monza, apparently, as well, just before the accident with Backham, so that might have contributed to that. Gap at the front is two seconds, and then Daniel Vensing is another one second behind, but still just about in the DRS zone. Here, oh, off goes Fluke. Fluke's made a mistake. And here comes Daniel Vensing, and he still cannot. Um take advantage but he might be able to do it with DRS now if he really pushes hard through O'Roos and he has is that close enough Adam I don't think it's close enough but we'll see he's got the run he's got the run Fluke has to cover the inside lot line so he's worried about it and he might go around the outside here Vensing but Fluke again late on the brakes able to hold on for now yeah Vensing didn't really commit to the braking area but it's probably wisely so didn't want to get involved in anything unnecessary unless he was completely past it, looks like. But it does look like Wensing might have the pace to, to at least bother Mac Backham if he gets somewhere near. Um, but it doesn't look like it at the minute. But it just shows, um, Adam, this is going to be a little gripe just on my part now, how Luke was able to hold on to that position despite making a major mistake, which in about, what, 99, 2000, he would have ended up in the wall there. Yeah, and uh, the circuit's changed quite a bit in recent times. In 2007, it was been a major overhaul, which added that runoff area into the source. Back in, back before then, in 2004 or before then, if you'd made a mistake there, you would have been greeted by an Armco barrier and possibly being bounced back into other cars as well. So and quite a few people made those mistakes as well. There's quite a few issues that um, people hitting walls at the exit of the last source. But just my point that he was able to get enough of an advantage to keep the position despite making what was a you know by these standards a fairly major error yeah there was a gravel trap there it, it probably would have ended up well for him but yeah he's been able to get going again fencing I using the DRS I don't see why there isn't a gravel trap there I don't see why you need a tarmac runoff area on the exit of a hairpin to be honest but there we go it's a slow corner you need to punish people if they mess it up anyway see what Wensing can do this time you see a bit further back not close enough or is he don't know got a great run up the hill reaching Luke. speeds of 330 kilometers per hour just before we hit the brakes yeah that's very quick indeed well over 200 miles an hour we about 210 and um, into Lacombe this time not close enough Wensing to uh, force Fluke into a mistake Looks like Stephen Michaels is catching Frick Chateau's very slowly. That's about two tenths a lap. He's getting towards the Dutchman. Michaels, of course, the winner in Silverstone. Simon Cattell, not too far away from Kevin Ellis Jr. either. Uh, Cattell, 49.9, 50.3 for Kevin Ellis Jr. These two had a great battle at Silverstone. Ellis managed to get past and then he spun, oh. unfortunately, for him. Which and I Lucas, know was the cause of some frustration. Lucas Gotch just demotes Cembo at Bassi another place. Well, Bassi down to 15. Lucas Gotch up into 14th place now. I wonder if I'm in. I don't know much about it, but I wonder if Chem could maybe come into the pits again. And I don't know. Could he get it? Is it possible to reset the car or reset the electronics or something? I don't know if it's something that can be. It can be done. Maybe Alex can tell us whether there is a, a fix. Shouldn't be too. Uh, as, as long as he finishes, it shouldn't be too much of a worry for for Champ. He's currently sixth in the standings. Remenyak is in front of him, but Gobby is out. Uh, Stephen Michaels, uh, who's also in ninth in the standings, is currently in uh, fifth, and Lucas Gotch. Uh, who's just got past him is in front of him. So as long as Chen finishes, he shouldn't lose too many more places by the time we get to the end of the race. Uh, it should keep him just within a shout of the top ten. Yeah, and... Um, That's the uncle we might have lost, actually. Somebody on the chat saying, oh, someone said he wins the race, so one of my mates that never wins tells me. <laughs> <laughs> but that, to be honest, Chen, Chen Bullock-Bass has got no choice but to go slow and steady, has he really? Because... If he really does have that uh, ERS problem, because he hasn't got any physical damage to the car, um, yeah, he might have to make a claim on the old warranty there from um, 
Honda possibly on this one. <laughs> I'm sure that the McLaren team might have had to use that warranty at some point during the last season. Well, Sebastian, less said yeah. about that the better, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian Dunkel uh, is disqualified. Uh, he had an off track through Puan a uh, lap ago and uh, that has added to another retirement. Massimiliano Ficara and Mark uh, Gotch are having a battle. Ah, this looks very is, close as well. That's Ficara oh. through. I mean, sorry, that's through. Yeah, Gotch is through, but Ficara was fighting back hard through Lacombe and almost managed to get alongside into Rivage. But again, you really have to just hope and pray, don't you, if you make a move into Rivage. It's not a place where you can really have a go lightly, unless you're possibly in a touring car, maybe. Speaking of touring cars, we've got the first race meeting of the BSR Kia Cup later tonight on Apex Racing TV. Yeah, that's the um, amalgamated BSR World Series and the Club Series. They're now going to be the BSR Kia Cup Series. So, lots of um, political machinations going on with the um, touring car scene here on iRacing, but we'll be pleased to bring that to you. And uh, tomorrow we've got the IMSA Sports Car Series as well, which should be fantastic. We had a great race there at Imola last week on New Year's Day. And then we have got... Um, oh, we've got a few bits coming up, haven't we? That's right, MX5s. <laughs> we've, got, um, we've got MX5s coming up. Yeah, exactly. We've also got um, the ASCOR Series, I believe, on Monday. I always get the acronyms wrong, but I think that's what it is. Um, so that should be really good for the first meeting of that. And, and then next week we've got um, World League Sim Racing making their debut on Apex Racing TV as well. So, And also the European VA Championship. The lots to, lots to seen, look forward yeah. to, Adam. Oh, crash! Gotch is Gotch gone! Is gone! Over and out the goes Lucas Rouge. Gotch. And he's out. Big, big hit. Oh, oh just a snap. Oh, that's a heavy crash. That is so Similar much to like the Magnussen as well. one, isn't it? He lost the car, a bit of oversteer coming through the left-hand part, and, it, and the tyres regain their grip, slamming him into the outside wall. Really, really heavy hit. Uh, Adam, that's really one of those crashes that makes you glad it's sim racing, isn't it? Definitely. If that was, um, it was pretty much identical to uh, to, to Kevin Magnussen. Mike Backham had a small issue there, but he's got back going again. I don't know what was going on there. Very slow through the bus stop chicane. Um, over the line he goes. That limits us now down to 22 runners oh. of the 32 that started. He lost the car through the first part, did uh, Backham. But he, he gained, gathered it all up on his way. Lost about well, nearly a second. But could have been a lot worse than that if he happened to still regain the lead and retain an advantage of 2.3 seconds. Jimmy Fluke still trying his hardest to get after Mac Backham. Uh, 149.8. Which is only three tenths, two tenths of a second away from uh, his personal best during the race. Wants there to is be a bit there of traffic, if something though. goes wrong. There is a bit of traffic, so it's possible that um, which moves out of the way. So, <laughs> so um, that's um, music to the music to the eyes, I guess, if you um, if you will, for Mac Mac Backham. Simon Cattell's getting ever closer to Kevin Ellis Jr. He's in, within DRS territory now of the Apex Academy car. One fifty point four last time around for Junior and 150.1 for Simon Cattell, so uh, he's getting close now. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look to see... Uh, uh, Alex says it's not it's not a really, really bad problem, it is the ERS problem, it's just obviously pulling him down on the straights, but it's still three or four seconds a lap slower. Them's best lap of the race, 150.3, 151.2 is the time he did last time around, so he's losing a good, good, nearly a second. Not as bad, is it? He sort of held station with uh, Daniel Bieder and he's from Balog. It's just that bit at the end of the straight where he loses that big time. Yeah. But not able to reach the top speed of uh, that Honda V6. But that's where you don't have, I guess, the DRS power and the, you, know, you don't have everything together, do you? Really pushing you along. Um, let's have a look then. Who have we not really spoken about today? We like to give everybody some airtime here on Apex Racing TV. Clever to Foley. Let's have a look. 20th place. Started 28th. He's chasing down Mark Warmington. He's about one and a one and a half seconds behind the Englishman. 
So, um, the Foley of Brazil. Not a bad race, actually, really. I think this is the first time we've seen him in the top split this season, Adam. But, you know, he's, he's still in there. He's still on the lead lap. And, um, yeah, we, we do like to give all the drivers a, a fair showing. Still there on a lap 36 of the race. Eight laps to go. Some big names have fallen by the wayside during this race. The likes of Job, Jensen, uh, Williams, Gobby, and, and most recently Lucas Gotch. And a Kleber Toffoli still standing strong. And, yeah, in with a top 20 finish at this rate. Yeah, some good points there. Some of those guys have half a chance of making it in if they have a last, if a good strong last three races. Be very, very strong, of course, but you can never rule anything out in this game. Because, um, you know, the thing with this series as well is everyone's not guaranteed to turn up and get any points, are they? Things can happen. People can have did not starts and D DNFs and everything. Well, this is a new rule for this season. Everyone's allowed to take part as Chempo Bassi loses another to this time, Mr. Van Balog. Yeah, this time everyone's allowed to take part, and uh, yeah, anyone even can us. turn up on the grid. Even, even us, we, yeah. Even we could have taken part if we'd have wanted to. Um, I mean, if if I was good enough remotely to be anywhere near any of these guys, I would have taken part. Yes. That's why enough, I'm in the commentary box. If I had enough box, buttons Lynn. on the wheel. <laughs> that, yeah, the, well, that's true. There are, uh, this is why I'm in the commentary box, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and this is why guys like Mac Backham, Jimmy Fluke, Daniel Vensing are out there on the circuit doing the business. And Alex, to be fair, Alex is just in the commentary box because we, we make him be in the commentary box with us. Yeah, he's, he's not really got much choice, has he? Yeah, that's it. Stuck with us lot. <laughs> that's it, can't get rid of us now. Let's have a look then. If there's anything going on further down. Simon Cattell's sort of close to Kevin Ellis, but he has been really for a few laps and hasn't really been able to get any kind of, uh, make any kind of inroads on him. He's about eight tenths of a second behind. He's got the DRS now. He is closing in a little bit, but you just sense that Ellis has enough for him. Um, Jurgis and Keith Lee, now that could be interesting. They're 1.4 behind and they've got Jao Vaz behind yeah. them. He closed in a lot there under braking going into LA Coombe at the top of the hill. Chalvaz, a late race surge here, 51-0 though last time around. Not well, the best lap there considering Keefley in front of him was doing a 50.7. Must have been right behind him for the whole lap. He's, he's monstering him now though, Chalvaz, the Orion race team, all the back of Jack Keefley. First time we've seen Keefley, I think, in the top split this season. I could be wrong there, Adam. I'm not sure if he was at Cota, but um, yeah, Keefley. He's had a pretty decent season, I think, in the second split. Where's he sat in the championship? I haven't got the standings to hand. Currently in 22nd in the standings, just behind Oscar Mangan, who uh, isn't racing here today. And uh, Jack Keefley on 865 points. Not too far off if he has a, a late season surge forward of getting a top 10. And But now, yeah, he's got it. He's right at the mercy now of Jao Vaz going into Blanchemont. That 38, six laps to go. Going through uh, one of the fastest parts of the circuit. Had some big crashes there over the years. Hold on the brakes, they go. Vaz closing under braking. He surely will get the DRS on the exit of the bus stop. But I'm sure Jack Keefley might just be within a second. So he too can get the DRS off the back of the X car. No, he's not close enough. So uh, Jao Vaz will get closer down the front straight. And now out of La Source towards Le Eau Rouge and the Kemmel straight. Battle for uh, ninth and 10th is on now. Portuguese driver very, very late on the brakes, chasing down the British driver. Up the hill, over the crest at Radion. We've seen some big crashes there, and, I, and we didn't really allude to it, Adam, but it must have been, again, temperature sensitive on the tyres at the top of that hill, because that's a massive load going through the car at that point. Definitely, yeah, and uh, Lucas Koch has had some issues during the race, but of course he had been able to get into the pits and get fresher tyres on. Uh, but yeah, definitely not working out from there. The car gripping on the exit, and that was what pitched him into the into the wall. Jalva still harassing the back of that McLaren, but still no way through. Uh, some other close battles going on. Still Kevin Ellis Jr. and Cattell still relatively close together. Uh, Stephen Michaels getting slightly closer to Friction Tours. However, I think it's not going to be enough for him to get possibly that fourth in. Chatorce was another three tenths of a second slower than Michael on that lap. Well, well, the Apex Racing Academy driver 
might be able to um, get into the DRS zone of Shuttos before the end of this race, but whether we can do anything about the team redline driver, I, I have no idea. Um, some overtaking moves, Adam, have looked quite easy today, and others haven't come at all, have they? There's not even been many attempts by some of the drivers out there. And speaking of overtaking attempts, we might get one now from Simon Cattell, because the INX racing driver is very, very close to the back of another Apex Academy car in Kevin Ellis Jr. Yeah, these are the two battles we've got then. We've got Jao Vazvi, Jack Keefley in the final five laps of the race, and we've got Simon, Simon Cattell versus Kevin Ellis Jr. And I uh, wonder who's going to come out on top. We have seen drivers uh, lose it whilst trying to get an overtake done, like Sebastian Job did. I'm sure he doesn't want to watch that on the recap reel uh, later right, this we week. Cattell's got a brilliant Cattell. run. Cattell's got a brilliant run. Surely Ellis is going to have to defend here. Ellis does not have to defend. The straight line speed is enough. And I'll tell you what, that's impressive straight line speed from Ellis's car. As Cattell had the DRS open, but we'll still not even be able to draw alongside him. Of course, all the teams will be running their own setup. This is not a fixed setup series. So the Apex setup working well in the straight line. But Simon Cattell is able to close in through, through the corners, but just can't get the overtake done. That straight line speed is just enough to keep Kevin Ellis Jr. in front. Yeah. For but everyone who thinks, well, this is, it's all down to driver skill. Don't get me wrong. The, the good drivers usually end up at the front. But this is where the team element comes in. Drivers will be working very, very hard oh. with their teammates. Sorry, yep. Dalvaz is not going to be getting past Jack Flea anytime soon. Um, just going to work out what happened to uh, Jalvaz. Lost it on the exit of the bus stop chicane. Oh. Going up through the gears. Did he do that a few laps ago? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much identical to what um, he did then, and yeah, now he's, he's, in, he's, he's still in 10. The remark, oh, it was just as he opened the DRS, Adam. You see it here. As the DRS flap comes open, he loses the back end. Straight away, when it rains, it pours for Jao Vaz. He has hit the wall very lightly, so I think he'll be okay. Goodness me, it's been a messy race for the Portuguese. Well, just a, this means just the battle we're going to... Sorry, go on, yep. Well, just, it just means the battle we'll be focusing on for the rest of the race then is Simon Cattell v Kevin Ellis Jr. Once again, Cattell gets a fantastic run on the exit. Closing, closing, 333 kilometres per hour he's reaching, but not close enough again. Yeah, and um, you've also got to be careful that you don't run into the driver in front when you've got the RS because, of course, you are going that much quicker in the slipstream and sometimes your breaking points even obscured so you need to be very very careful it's held very very close uh, just just back to the point I was making before the, the difference comes in these drivers working very very hard with their their teammates with their crew chiefs during the week getting as much practice in as they can getting the laps in finding a good setup for qualifying and for the race and of course they've got to take into account the weather variations um, fuel burn rates, all that stuff. So that's why, if you're wondering why certain teams are still near the front, that's why, because obviously they're doing better work behind the scenes. Because there's not really a lot between these top, top drivers, is there, Adam? Definitely not. And uh, the top teams always rise to the top here, and it's definitely showing here at Spa. We've got um, the RS Coanda Sims Sport, of course. They're the reigning champions of the World Championship Grand Prix Series with Martin Kronke taking the title last season. Uh, Jamie Fluke Apex Racing, a team really on the up uh, as the seasons continue. Uh, Dan Bensing, Radicals as well. Freak Chateau's Team Redline, they'll be hoping to get their title back in the World Championship well, this season. And Stephen Line. Michaels for Apex Academy as well. Redline have won at least five World Championships. And uh, they'll be looking for more. They could take home the 200,000 $250,000 later today as well. I'll tell you what, there'll be a party tonight. Either way, I think for, for those guys out there, is it going to be a party for Simon Cattell? Because I'll tell you what, he'll feel like he wants to dance if he wins this battle with Kevin Ellis Jr. He's right in the slipstream, Adam. He just can't. <laughs> he just can't get there. Tell you what, he needs a bit of traffic and then we could recreate the 2000 race between Packenham and Schumacher. He needs, he needs a big... He needs a big hand on the front of his car where he can just pull back Kevin Ellis Jr. down the straight because it looks like that's the only way he's going to do it. He's been so close, Adam, so close. But for some reason, 
just doesn't have the ultimate top end speed to overhaul that Apex Racing Academy car. On this lap, just an overtake. Balaj Remignac getting past uh, Daniel Bida, sorry, getting past Balaj Remignac. As that is Bida up into 11th place, Remignac down to 12th. But yeah, Simon Catali, he rounds in um, uh, Kevin Ellis Jr., but just can't get there in Look time how, to get it done. Look how close he is. Yeah, the Ellis Ilex car, it works a treat through the corners. Oh, it's beautiful through the middle sector. And he's right in the slipstream here. You know, it could be worth having a lunge into the chicane or the hairpin or something just to try and to try something different. Could he have a look? Could he have a go into the hairpin here? Oh, oh. Not quite close enough, but he's definitely sizing him up. He's got beautiful balance in that car. Cattell driving beautifully. This is the most competitive we've seen him so far in the 2016-17 iRacing Road Pro Series. Now it begins again. Look how close he is to that diffuser, as he has to be, judging by previous laps. Good exit by Ellis, that might just do it. Simon um, Cattell in 33rd in the overall standings, running it fantastically here, an opportunity to get 6th place up for grabs, 2 He's laps got a to good go. Run. He has got a very nice run indeed, again buried in the DRS zone, is he going to have a look into Lacombe? It's very difficult to make a lunge there as we've said a few times in this broadcast. You're not going to get there unless you're alongside. But it's not going to stop Simon Cattell from trying, that's for sure. You'll have one more With opportunity. Two laps to go. You'll have one more opportunity down the Kemmel straight. He's going to have to try and get Ooh. inventive. Warmington and Toffoli. Toffoli's close. Warmington goes defensive. Defending fresh air slightly, the Englishman. And he goes wide. This is going to give Toffoli a chance exiting the corner. The marbles that we've got on the track now on the exit of the bus stop chicane there just starting the penultimate lap now drs for tofoli and now going into the source can he get a good run mark warmington's last lap 153 one very slow there by mark warmington 52 8 for claver tofoli see if tofoli can get anything done up the hill warmington's suffering he's really suffering for ers it looks like tofoli's surely going to get there as he opens the DRS now on the final lap, this is a great battle for 19th place. Toffoli is through, he takes the position. Warmington will be disappointed, but a bitterly fought uh, contest is won by Toffoli. And now we're to the front, and it's the final lap for Mike Backham. I thought that Cattell was going to have a little look. Punch into the bus stop chicane on that lap, better of it. Michaels is in the DRS of Freak Chateau, you know. Only half a second behind him. He's not going to be really, really close, but he might be able to bother him for the rest of the lap. Michael's How much closing. ERS has Source got left? Ah, that's the question. Doesn't look like a great deal, I've got to say. Here comes Cattell, and this is as close as he's ever been. Here he comes, to the outside. He's, he's alongside. Oh, and round the outside he goes. Is there grip out there? I don't think there is. No, he's off. there isn't. And he's just misses Kevin oh. Ellis Jr. But he gets back going again and... Nice try, Simon, but yeah, he's back down to seventh. I commend that because he had to try something. Final lap of the race, lap 44. You've run out of all your other options. Why not have a go? Oh, it looks like um, Ellis is quite slow, though. Oh, Scherzis has lost the place to Keithley. Don't know what happened there to uh, Pershalis. Keithley's gone through. But coming out of curve, Paul Frere for the final time is our race leader. He started on pole position. He's led pretty much every lap of the race. And as long as he goes through the bus stop chicane unscathed, he's going to come through and he's going to take his second win of the season. It's back back and Masters Belgium. He wins at Spa Francorchamps. Jamie Fluke in second. Daniel Vensing completes the podium. And we're going to see Frick Chateau come home in fourth place ahead of Michaels. Is it going to be Cattell? Is it going to be Ellis? It's very, very close. Cattell nearly got back to Kevin Ellis Jr. at the end. And Ellis takes sixth place. Fantastic job from Backham. Lost the lead momentarily at the start when Fluke got up the inside of him. But he got the lead back into Lake on the first lap and never looks back from there. Here comes, oh, sorry. I yeah. thought Jack Keith, I thought he nearly was losing the car there, but... He gets ahead of Bashalis uh, Georges. And then Zhao Vazu. 
That's one of the most eventful races for any single... Oh, goodness me. <laughs> for any single driver um, that we've seen this season. But Zhao Vaz somehow finishes in the top ten, Adam. Extraordinary. But right where he started as well. So uh, you can talk about him being uh, consistent. Just wanted to finish where he started. As uh, Chen Bassi managed to finish ahead of Istvan Balik in the end. Yeah, and we've still got unfinished business out there. Sabitov, who um, was under a little bit of pressure from Victor Prieto at the end. Sabitov really suffering. 53s he's doing. As is Prieto, Sabitov gets across. And Toffoli finished very strongly. 19. With a 50.4. 50 and doing his personal best on the last lap. That's a very good lap. It's only three tenths slower than what Jamie Fluke did on the last lap. If he'd have done 44 of those, he'd have been in the top 10. Mark Warmington, the last car running at the end. Well, on the lead lap anyway. Yeah, and well done to Mark as well. Winner in Monza. First top split outing of the season. And finishes on the lead lap. Um, Adam, take us through the results of this iRacing Elgin Grand Prix. So Matt Backham takes the second win of the season round two at Montreal and he wins round seven today at Spa. Jamie Fluke finishing second uh, that will probably take him to the top of the iRacing Road Pro Series standings. Dan Bensing finishing in third, Farouk Chateau's finishing in fourth place uh, that search for a win continues for him. Steve Michaels finishing in fifth with Kevin Ellis Jr in sixth. Seventh Simon Cattell he did try on the final lap but just couldn't get past that Apex Academy car. Jack Keefley in eighth, ninth Pashalis Sergis and 10th for uh, Zhao Vaz. Just uh, credit to Jack Keefley, 13 positions higher than when he started. Started in 21st, finished in 8th. 11th for Daniel Bieder, uh, 12th for Balaj Fremeniak. Massimiliano started outside the top 30, 31st, finished 13th. Chen Bolak-Bassi, the ERS continues, uh, the ERS issues continue to plague uh, his his races and he finished in 14th place. Istvan Balog finishing in 15th place, Ferenc uh, Kern in 16th with Russell and Sabatov in 17th, 18th for Victor Prieto. Uh, Kleber Toffoli finishing in 19th place after starting in uh, 23rd place, 28th place, sorry, and then Mark Warmington finishing in 20th. 21st for Francesco Fioroni, one lap down, as well as, as Stephen Larkamp, then 10 laps down, Lucas Gotch. Uh, a calamitous race coming to an end on the wall on the exit of Eau Rouge. Sebastian Dunkel uh, finishing in 24th, Fernando Guerrero 25th, Fabrizio Gobbi disqualified, David Williams upside down on the exit of Eau Rouge, Alex Bergeron finishing in 28th, Giuseppe Ragusa 29th, Marcus Jensen uh, g going off in the bus stop chicane, bad rejoin and it caused some terrible suspension damage for him and he was out. Sebastian Job. Uh, lost it whilst trying to do an overtake down the Kemmel Straits. Finished in 31st place, 37 laps down. And Simon Jonic was the first of the cars out of the race, finishing in 32nd. Yeah, thanks for that, Adam. And, um, well, an attritional race here at Spa, as it usually is. 20 cars finished. And um, we have two men who not only finished the race, but finished it first and second. Jamie Fluke, but first, our race winner, um, Mac Backer. Mac, your second of the season. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to get another win under my belt. I uh, really needed that. <laughs> well, putting Monza behind you in fine style, pole position, led nearly all of the laps, race victory. Um, got a little bit tense in the middle though, didn't it? Yeah, I wanted. I noticed Jamie and uh, Daniel pitted a little early, uh, but I, I had a decent lead, so I just wanted to drive it out and then have as fresh a tire as possible uh, in the end. So uh, I think I should have pitted a lap earlier, but uh, yeah, it worked out. I, uh, I had good pace, so I was I was yeah, I was able to run away uh, out of the DRS zone, and after that, I was just yeah doing my laps. How are you feeling now in terms of the um, the car's balance? Because uh, I know you were suffering a bit in Lagos. I know really you had you barely driven the car, but as you got used to it, what are you thinking about this McLaren now? Um, I don't know. It hasn't really changed that much. I was. I was just really comfortable today with this setup, and uh, yeah, I, I did a lot of laps, uh, like the first week after uh, Monza it was, so I got used to the car pretty quickly, and then uh, yeah, I just carried on from there, and I think it was just this week that I was really comfortable with the car, I hope I can do it again next week, but uh, I'm not too sure.
Well, it, all, it all always helps when you're getting comfortable with the machinery. And um, Jamie, I tell you what, it always helps when you're at a track like this, doesn't it? Because it's um, a great place for a race. Oh, it's a brilliant place for a race. Um, plenty of overtaking opportunities, and uh, it always throws up its first share of drama. So I, I was just hoping actually to keep a, you know, a clean nose and have a very boring race, but didn't quite pan out that way for myself either. So tell, five seconds. Tell us. A, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, tell us about that start, Jamie, because you started on the second row of the grid, and by we got the time we got to the source, you were leading. Uh, yeah, it's it's the first start I think this season where I've had a clean run to actually go for a gap, and I got. Know, yeah, just the, the right route was just off the start, so I uh, was just fortunate that I got one and then I you know, thought, okay, yeah, this is all good, up, up through a Rouge and Rally on, and also Max straight by me again. It's like, ah, oh, okay, well, that's, that's, that's just happened. <laughs> well, five seconds behind just before the pit stops, um, were you a bit surprised when you saw Mac appear just in front of you? Um, based on how everyone's tyres would have fell away in the first stint, I, I had a pretty per balanced car sort of from halfway through the first stint on and wasn't falling back as much as I thought it would so I was expecting the undercut to be quite big but not quite as big as that so it was a, it was a bit of a surprise whenever Mac was right in front of me as he came out of the source. Did you ever have a chance? I mean it didn't look like you ever got it looked like you got very close but could uh, you have done anything to make the move or was it just the fact that you'd, you know you'd, you'd rather finish the race? Uh, a few things. One, I think Mac was more trimmed out than I was in a straight line, so making a move even with DRS was going to be very difficult anyway. Um, secondly, uh, thinking big picture here, it's championship to try and win and a pro license still to try and get, so there's that as well. And plus, Daniel was only second half, two seconds behind, so if, if something was like if we started scrapping, it would bring him into play, and uh, I try and keep my battles as much of a one on one as possible, so. Uh, once I realise, okay, I don't have the move done, I'll, I'll fall in behind and try and keep up with them. I mean, do you, we, we've talked about this before, Jamie, in terms of uh, the BSRTC and things like that, and how it changed your mindset um, halfway through last season, really, cause, because you know, there were races you were retiring from, you are focusing on just getting everything right, getting all these race finishes in. And... Um, I mean, Mac, is that something that you, is that how you've approached this season or is it just sort of, you know, race normally and see what happens? Uh, for me, it's just been race as normally as I can, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, just doing my practice, trying to not make mistakes. I, it's just the new car for me, it's tough, so uh, I'm not trying to do anything crazy like I did at Monza. <laughs> well, it sounds like there was a contributing factors to that one as well. Um, Adam, have you got anything for, for these guys? Oh uh, yeah, Mac, uh, we go to Imola next week. A uh, relatively new circuit to the iRacing service. I think the World Championship has raced there uh, once before. Uh, what's your opinion of that track? Because um, it's going to be quite interesting to see how the McLaren goes around there. I I can't really tell you. I mean, I've never done a lap there yet. I, I bought a track uh, a few weeks after it came out, but I never really loaded it up. So uh, it's going to be completely new for me. And Jamie, yeah, that... Have you ever driven there before, Mac? So, uh, sorry, what do you say? Have you ever driven there before in anything else? So, no, no, never. Ah, oh, you'll like it. It's a good one. It's a good track. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, Jamie, the, the run out of Rivazza to Tamburello, we, we'll probably have a DRS zone there. Do you think that'll be long enough for uh, the McLarens to get an overtake done by the time we get to the first chicane? Um, based on races that I've done here before in uh, A-Class, um, it, it is the main overtaking opportunity. Um, but if your car's set up right, um, and then you get a good run out of Rivazza, you can't defend there, which I think strikes a nice balance. Is what I like to see out of any circuit where it's not just a slam dunk overtake. If you've got a run on someone, you, know, you can actually defend as well. So it should throw up some really, really good racing, I think. Of course, um, Adam, I think we... The one thing the guys may struggle with is the fact that it's um, it's still a fairly fast first corner, so we'll, so it might be that um, the braking area isn't long enough. But anyway, we digress about that. We'll wait until next week to see exactly what happens. Um, Mac, as you took top honours today, you can be the first one to um, thank your team, thank your sponsors, or anybody else you'd like to um, give a shout out to. Yeah, I want to thank Martin uh, first for helping me uh, with the setup this week and uh, yeah, with practice in general and also for spotting today. 
And uh, yeah, we have a few new sponsors. So uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, VRS, which has uh, re renewed for another year. And uh, new on board is Hosingfeld Engineering and uh, Simquip. And other than that, I want to thank Ember and Design and uh, JRT. Well, so the the, the Hosingfeld guys are uh, very good. I was speaking to them at the um, Sim Expo, and um, yeah, they know what they're doing. So um, good for you guys to have them on board. Um, Jamie, your turn, my friend. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I'd like to thank Michael uh, Dinkle on the pit wall uh, this afternoon. He was uh, useful just to help us get, uh, find a little gap uh, coming out of the pit stops. Uh, just thank the whole team for you know helping out with the set. Um, it's been a long break, so we've had plenty of time to sort of get knuckled down and try to find something out this week. Um, and then obviously for our sponsors, so uh, JCL, Simputers, ProSim, Leo Bodner, Sim Steering, and Elite Driver Services. All right, nice one. And that just about covers it, Adam, I reckon. Yeah, it does, yeah. Well done uh, to you guys for getting uh, first and second place. And yeah, we'll see you at Imola next week. Cheers, thank you very much. Cool, thank you. Jamie Fluke and Mike Backham, second and first today at Spa. Um, Adam, I actually really enjoyed that race. I, I, even though it wasn't sort of the all-out action that we predicted in terms of the overtaking, just how the race panned out was very, very interesting to me. Yeah, it was one for the purists, I think. Uh, one to keep you interested about all the strategy that was going on. And that mid-pack was definitely something to watch throughout the race. A lot of good racing there between those guys. And uh, yeah, some drivers are not uh, doing too well, like the likes of Lucas Gotch and uh, Jao Vaz. But they'll be back next week at Imola. One of the great circuits uh, that we go to on this uh, brilliant iRacing Road Pro Series calendar. And yeah, the championship could take another twist. Yep, there's been many twists and turns throughout this series so far in 2017 um, but one man has risen to the top yet again and it's Mac Backham who takes his second win of the season so from all of us here at Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live from Andrew Woodhouse and Adam Bath and Sam Kumo on cameras it's goodbye from Spa Francorchamps and we'll see you at Imola next week for round 8 of the iRacing Road Pro Series we'll see you then